drive. What is going on everyone? Uh, today we're installing the Sprint Booster on the 19 Ram. This is uh, a pedal controller similar to uh, like a Pedal Commander or a JMS Pedal Max. Um, I know Hammer Down Motorsports did JMS Pedal Max on his truck, so I'll put his video link down in the description if you want to check that out. Um, I decided to go with the Sprint Booster uh, just because I haven't seen anyone else with a, a new Ram have them yet. Um, and there's a couple things I like about it over the pedal commander and all that. So um, we're going to go ahead and unbox it here, show the installation. This is it. This is the unit itself. Very small. As you can see, it's like <laughs> smaller than my thumb. Um, I will make a follow up video to this explaining uh, how this thing works and why I chose this over a JMS pedal max or a pedal commander. But today we're just going to show how to put it in and I'm going to show you um, the changes that we have between stock and putting this in as far as throttle responsiveness and all that jazz. So let's get started. All right. So the first step is to select manual or auto transmission on the side of the sprint booster. There's a little switch right there and on the bottom it says ATMT. So auto transmission towards the bottom, which it is. And I do have the eight speed auto, of course. So we're good there. Now the main connector uh, that plugs into the pedal is right here and unboxed and take the controller end and it's going to plug in right here. <laughs> Honestly, the hardest part about everything on this is that it is so small, which is kind of a blessing in disguise because that's one of the big things that I don't like about the pedal commander is that it's got that big awkward brick. There we go. Clicked into place. Now the next step says to shut the vehicle off. Uh, and open the vehicle door with the keys removed so that the CAN system can go through its self-check. It's supposed to leave it for 10 minutes, so I'm going to shut the truck off. I'm going to take the keys out, go inside, do a couple things. I'm going to leave the door open, and I'll come back in 10 minutes. All right, the door has been open and the ignition has been off for 10 minutes. We're going to come underneath here by the pedal, and you will see up on top of the accelerator pedal is the connector. Now, this piece right here, you're gonna to wanna to grab both sides of it and pull. If you're having a hard time pulling it out for whatever reason, you can use a small flat blade screwdriver or a pick and get underneath it in the center and kind of pry on it, but be gentle. You don't wanna force it and break this connector. Um, now that, sorry, my hand's in the way. Uh, now that you have it unplugged, or unlatched you can lift up on it and now what we're going to do is take our sprint booster and it's going to plug into the pedal and into this connector it's just going to go in line all right now kind of bear with me um just using one hand here so the end with the same connector as we just removed is going to go to the pedal so in theory it should the red part should face us because that's how the old one was try to get as good of a view as I can here, but it's kind of tight. All right, so it's gonna slide. You wanna have this red collar pulled all the way out, and then you'll be able to push it down a little bit, and it won't go the rest of the way down until you start pushing in on the red collar. So you gotta push down and in on this. See that? It went down the rest of the way, and now the red piece is pushed in as far as it'll go. So now we're uh, locked in. And now we just got to hook the factory connector like that to this end of the sprint booster same exact steps you'll see that this end of the sprint booster connector this side is rounded while the left side over here is a little bit more squared so that's how you got to know um, that's how you know which way this connector will go as you can see uh, to the left of the connector looks a little more rounded so that's the way it's going to have to go together and again we're going to put constant pressure on it it'll only plug in so far then we'll have to keep squeezing together while we push this tab in to fully lock it in. All right, we are in action. Now, obviously we wanna tie all this up so that our feet aren't getting caught and the wires aren't caught in the pedal. But for now, I'm just gonna kinda of pull this up here and we're gonna test it out first before I figure out how exactly I wanna route everything. All right, now we're gonna start up the truck, see what happens. We got power. All right, so per the directions, there's three modes, 
stock, sport, and race, which is no light, green light, and red light. To switch through the modes, you just push the big, well, it's small, but the biggest button on it, this chrome sprint booster one. So as you see, the red light is on, that's race. We push it again, it's at stock. And one more is green for sport mode. Now within sport and race mode, you have one through nine as far as uh, like sensitivity or levels go, however you wanna say. So like we got green right now, that's sport. You can go all the way down to level one in sport, all the way up to nine. Uh, and then obviously if you hit race, you can do the same thing. Uh, I would assume it looks like um, race mode nine is probably your most aggressive um, obviously, but I don't, I don't know if we're going to want to be driving around with that all the time. You know, I don't, I don't want it where I tap the pedal and the thing takes off like a rocket ship just because I barely touched it. Obviously that could be a little unsafe, um, especially like around in town, but I do want, you know, something better because this, the stock throttle response is just awful. Now reading over here, it says if you hold down the sprint booster button, it turned for three seconds. It shuts off the display if you don't want that number showing all the time. And now you can't use the arrows. So whatever mode you had it in when you shut the display off is the mode that it's now locked into until you turn the display back on. Now, this light doesn't shut off, whether it be the red one or the green one. So I don't know how much, you know, turning the display off is actually going to do for you. It doesn't really bother me. It's pretty small, so I'm just going to leave it on. I'm gonna hold it here for three seconds, turn it back on. It's also kind of cool that it saves um, your preset, so now it's on race nine. Let's say you want race nine for when some punk rolls up at the stoplight next to you. <laughs> but normally you don't want that much throttle response, you just want it in like sport mode. Well, you can tap it and it's saved my sport five preset. So you can, you can kind of hone in on what you like for your daily driving keep that one on the sport and then at the push of the button you can switch it to race if you need to the only thing is they say don't push the accelerator down while you're switching this so you should not be on the throttle when you're changing this otherwise you know the vehicle can be running uh, you know idling and all that you can basically switch it on the fly another thing to note is right here where it says if for whatever reason the selector switch becomes disconnected from the sprint booster it'll keep the last setting in memory so if you're in sport five and somehow you unplugged it or the controller took a crap um, it should in theory remain in sport five if you live in high theft areas it also features a pedal lock mode that requires a three digit pin so in, in essence if someone starts your truck they won't even be able to drive it if they manage to get it started unless they know your pin you can also enter in a valet mode which reduces the acceleration of the vehicle again uses a three digit pin now again i'll show how to do this stuff in a follow-up video i'm more concerned with getting it in and doing some tests today. So let's go ahead and do that. And then obviously after you make sure everything works and everything is plugged in, um, you should secure this up somewhere. I wouldn't necessarily hook it to this. That's a linkage for one of your blended doors, I believe. Um, but there's probably some up here. You could tie it, do like maybe this, this piece right here. It's a piece of steel. Um, zip tie this up to that as well as the wire. Uh, they do supply one zip tie you might need a few more and then they also supply uh, some 3m tape if you want to stick it on the back of this and put it on the dash somewhere i haven't decided where i want to put mine yet um maybe right here something like that it can't it doesn't quite fit like on this flat surface. Obviously you want a nice flat surface if you're gonna do 3M tape. Um, but otherwise, I mean, once you pick what mode you want, you can tie it up under the dash too. I mean, you're probably not gonna be flipping back and forth too much. Um, you find the sport mode you like, a, a race mode you like, and you can just push the sprint booster button um, to change on the fly basically. All right, now in addition to testing the sprint booster from a dead stop, we are gonna test it also while we're at speed just to see I, I don't know if it will but i just want to see if it does make the uh like the kick down times any faster so i'm gonna get up to 50 here i'm in stock form so the sprint booster is not on right now okay we're cruising and now listen for the pedal click i'm gonna stop it and see what happens Now we're in 
Ocean Sport 9, and we're gonna do the same thing. Listen for the pedal snap. All right, now we are in race nine. Again, pedal snap. So here we are, stock form, it's not on, dead stop. I'm just gonna mat it down. You'll hear the accelerator hit the floor and we'll see what kind of response time we have stock and compare that to say Sport 9 and Race 9. Now we're in Sport 9, we're gonna do the same thing. Now we're in race nine, same thing. All right, now just in case it doesn't seem like it on camera or whatever, or maybe the times aren't exactly faster, this will be a better comparison. So I'm cruising at 65, I'm in stock mode right now, and I'm going to just pinch the throttle, okay? It's not going to downshift. I'm just going to give it a little bit. I probably pushed down on the pedal about a half inch. It's slowly accelerating, but it's not, you know, it didn't downshift or do anything aggressive. All right, now we're in race nine. No, you can't see because of the sun, but just trust me, it's in race nine. We're gonna do the same thing. 65, just gonna push the pedal down about a half inch. See that? So it definitely helps with response while cruising as well. And obviously a lot less hesitation, which honestly, that's what I was looking for. I didn't necessarily need it right out the gate from a stop. Um, you know, there's a little bit of lag. Uh, but it wasn't anything too horrible. It's it's mostly for when, you know, I'm cruising like this and I got to get on it to pass somebody or get around somebody or, you know, get on an on-ramp and it kind of doesn't know what it wants to do. It just wants to, well, okay, now I'll downshift. Now it's, you know, you tap it and it's right there. Now it's on Sport 9. I'm going to do the same thing, just push the pedal a little bit. And as you see, it downshifted, but not as violently. So obviously there is a difference between sport and race. You see what happens, and again, I'll show this in the next video, is that when you floor it, no matter how fast you floor it in stock form, even if you snap the pedal down as fast and as hard as you can, the throttle plate only opens at a certain speed. It opens much slower than how fast you step down the pedal. So if you're in a situation where you need to pass someone quick and you stomp the pedal down, it's gonna take, you know, a couple seconds or, you know, at least longer than it would with the sprint booster to uh, downshift or get going. It's gonna, it's gonna accelerate slower uh, with a longer response time. And that's the main reason I got this again is because I want the pedal there. When I want it now, I get it now, not, oh, well, I'll tap it maybe it'll go. Now here's another thing to note. Uh, again, we're in race nine, cruising at 70, and I'm just gonna give it that half an inch worth of pedal travel, just kind of pinch it a bit. And you'll see down where it says drive, it's in eighth gear right now. And when I give it that little bit of throttle in race mode, it actually goes down to sixth gear without even flooring it, just kind of tapping it. It actually went down to fifth there for a second. Um, when you do that in stock mode or sport mode, it only goes down to seventh gear. So stock, you pinch the throttle, it just kind of goes forward. It doesn't even want to downshift until you give it more throttle than I'm giving it in race mode. Then it'll finally downshift, but it, it'll go to seventh gear. Unless you floor it, then it'll go down a couple more. Sport mode in sport nine, uh, kind of the same thing but more responsive you don't have to push it quite as far down for it to downshift but when it does downshift again it only goes to seventh unless you put the pedal down more and then when you have it in race just like I showed you you can just kind of tap it and 
there's fifth. Like, I didn't even floor it right there. Let's let's cruise and then I'll floor it. It goes down to fourth when you floor it. So again, this product and products like it, you know, the GMS Pedal Max, the Pedal Commander, none of them are gonna gain you horsepower, torque, or overall top speed. All they're gonna do is give you better throttle response. They're gonna make it a little more punchy off the line, you know, better maybe 60 foot times and zero to 60 times at the track. You know, again, probably nothing huge, but that's not why I got it. I didn't get it to have better reaction times and all that. I got it so that when I'm cruising, and I give it gas, it goes forward and it downshifts and it gets moving instead of you push the pedal down, you push the pedal down, you push the pedal down. Oh, now it's finally downshifting. I said I will have a follow-up video kind of showing how to do the pedal lock, the valet mode, and then showing um, the throttle plate response time. I'll take my intake tube off. I'll have someone hit the pedal and we'll see if it is exactly how they say it is, where the throttle plate opens slowly and then with the sprint booster, see if it goes faster. Again, I'll put this product link in the video description if you wanna purchase one. Um, I'll also list the Pedal Max and the Pedal Commander if you want one of those instead, based on your preference. Uh, if this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this, and check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching.